This is lesson four, and in this example, we'll write our first VHDL program and implement it on an FPGA on the Nexus 2 board. The problem that we'll do is we'll implement these six gates AND, NAND, OR, NOR, exclusive OR, and exclusive NOR, and we'll have these two inputs A and B. <clears throat> now, this is the entire VHDL program that we'll use. So let's take a look at it in more detail. The VHDL program is made up of an entity and an architecture. Here's what the entity looks like. Each entity must begin with this library statement, library IEEE, and this use statement, use IEEE standard logic 1164.all. <clears throat> this is a VHDL program that's provided by the system and is in the folder IEEE in this library. These two dashes is a comment in VHDL. So example one, two input gates is just a comment. The entity has the entity name gates2 and then it uses this port statement and the port statement defines the inputs and outputs. In this case we have the two inputs A and B and the output Z. Now <clears throat> we use the statements in or out, the so-called mode, to say that A and B are inputs and we use out to define Z as an output. The data type <coughs> is of type standard logic or standard logic vector 5 down to 0. Now what's standard logic? Well standard logic is a type <coughs> that's defined in this IEEE uh, library. And in that library, a type standard U logic is defined that has nine values. U means uninitialized, X means an unknown, 0 and 1 are the 0 and 1's you're used to, Z means high impedance, W is a weak unknown, L is a weak 0, H is a weak one, and dash is a don't care. So these nine values are all values that the inputs and outputs of your circuit can have. Now the reason for this is so that you can resolve the case where two outputs are connected to each other. <clears throat> the type U logic is what's called unresolved and a resolve signal provides a mechanism for handling the problem of multiple output signals connected to one signal. So standard logic is a subtype which is a resolved standard U logic and there's a big resolution table that tells you what's going to happen. So for example if one output 0 is connected to an output 1 Normally this would be a bad situation, but in this case the result is unknown. So if you simulate a um, circuit where this is the case, the unknown will show up. On the other hand, for example, if you connect a high impedance output to a 1 output, then the resulting output is 1. So these resolution tables are what define what happens of these standard logic types. Now, the AND functions have their own table, AND or the various gates. <clears throat> so here's an example of an AND table that tells you what the AND function is going to do if the inputs are any of the nine inputs of type standard logic and the other input is one of these. Well, the ones we're interested in, of course, mostly are the zero and one inputs and the 0 and 1 inputs, and here is the truth table for an AND gate that you're familiar with, where the output of an AND gate is 1, only if both inputs are 1. But this table tells you what happens for an AND gate for any of the other nine possible inputs. So let's look at the architecture of the program. The architecture, which is the second part of the VHDL program, looks like this for our uh, problem. And notice that we simply use these assignment statements for each of these outputs. 
and notice we use the signal assignment less than or equal so z0 which is down here you see is the output of the XNOR gate is just a XNOR b similarly z5 up here is just a and b now the statement architecture has a name, I call it gates2 here, you could call it something else, but this second statement must be the entity name, gates2, and then you list the statements, but notice that we always have to have a begin and end here, and gates2, that's this architecture name, gates2. Now, note that all these statements execute concurrently, that is, it's not like a program where first Z5 is calculated and then Z4, you could write these in any order and it would produce the same result. So this is the uh, entire program. We're going to, I'm going to show you how you actually uh, uh, implement this on an FPGA in a minute. But uh, first you could simulate this using our Active HDL simulator. Uh, in the tutorial on using ActiveHDL, uh, if you watched that video clip, you saw how to do it. This was the result. <clears throat> a and B are the inputs. We use clock stimulators. Here's a 0 and 1 for A, 0, 1, 0, 1 for B. So A and B go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And the output for the AND gate is high only if both inputs are high. AND is just the opposite of AND. The OR gate, remember, is zero only if both inputs are zero, one otherwise. NOR is just the opposite. And the exclusive OR was one if A is one and B is zero, or if B is one and A is zero. Otherwise, it's zero, and the XNOR is just the opposite. So the simulation works. So we're then ready to synthesize it. We're going to synthesize it to this Nexus 2 FPGA boards. We'll use these two rightmost dip switches for the inputs A and B, and then we'll display the six outputs, Z5 down to Z0, in these lower six LEDs. Now, <coughs> there's a file called Nexus 2 UCF, which gives the pin number associated with the LEDs and the switches and all the other inputs outputs. So this is a piece of this file, Nexus 2 UCF. So for example, uh, LD sub 0, that is LED number 0, is connected to pin number J14 on the FPGA. LD7 is connected to R4. Switch 0, that's the rightmost switch, is connected to G18. Switch 7, the leftmost switch, is connected to R17, and so forth. Now, it's going to be convenient to use the same names for the LEDs, we'll always call them LD, and for the switches, SW, in all of our programs. We can then use this UCF file to define the pin numbers, <coughs> which means we need to write a top-level design, I'll call it gates2 top, in which the entity contains the input SW, that is the two switches, one down to zero, two rightmost switches, and the output LD, standard logic vector 5 down to 0. These are going to be the outputs. So we need to connect our gates to these switches, and we do that uh, in the architecture for this top-level design. Between the word architecture and the word begin, we must include a component declaration of all the components we have, in this case just gates 2. When gates 2, remember the two input inputs were called A and B, and the output was Z. Then in the main architecture part of the top-level design, between begin and end, we use this port map statement. So we have the component declaration, and we have the component instantiation, where we define this label C1, an arbitrary label, gates 2, that's the name of this component, and we use this port map statement, where on the left-hand side are the inputs and outputs of the component, A, B, and Z, and on the right-hand side 
we write down what they're connected to. That is, these are the inputs and outputs of the top-level design. So A is going to be connected to switch 1, B to switch 0, and Z, which was standard logic vector 5 down to 0, gets connected to LD, which we defined in the top-level entity as being also 5 down to 0. So we can just set Z to LD. So this is a top-level design.